Um, so 3D animation is an asset-based pro process, and what this means is that as opposed to what some of you might think, we don't actually draw our characters each frame. Uh, we sort of create a puppet of them in 3D space, in virtual space. So we start out by modeling them and sculpting them, and this is all done in a uh, virtual world. And uh, then we start applying all sorts of things like uh, materials which define how uh, light will fall off the objects, uh, how much of it will be reflected, how much of it will be absorbed, all sorts of things like that. Uh, we apply uh, animation rig, which is not unlike uh, strings are to a marionette. What this means is that we sort of define a skeleton and joints, and we apply a uh, muscle system and deformation uh, parameters and all sorts of things like that so that when our character will fold his arm, for example, first of all, we'll see, well, I'm not a very good example, but we'll see the bicep flexing and we'll see the elbow protruding and all sorts of things like that that add a level of realism. Now, um, basically, when the character creation process is done, we end up with um, this character. We can virtually do whatever we want with, and we can start setting up cameras and animating them along a timeline. And uh, we end up with this virtual studio, uh, this virtual set, which is remarkably similar to a live action set. It has lights, and it has cameras, and it has lens effects, and environmental effects, and atmospheric effects, and all these things that we try to uh, manipulate so they will behave as physically realistic as possible. And um, the biggest uh, difference, perhaps, between this virtual set and a live action set, to me as an artist, is the non-linear workflow that this allows me. And what I mean by this is that I can, at any point uh, in the creation process, go to any which element I pick and just zoom in it, do whatever I want, replace it, play around with it, zoom back out, see how it plays out in the big picture. And I can just go backward and forward and reiterate whatever I want to reiterate until I'm satisfied with the final result. So if, for example, I have an animation sequence and I don't like the character performing it, I switch the character and keep the animation. And if I had like the animation and the character, but I don't like the lighting, I switch the lighting. And this is also correct for smaller resolution things, such as if I like a walk cycle uh, that a character is performing, but I don't like the way his arms are moving, then I simply tweak the arms, but I keep the rest of the animation. And uh, this is a, an incredible freedom as an artist. I don't know which, uh, which of you have actually experienced these kind of processes, but this allows me to really reiterate and go back and forth, and it's uh, amazing. So before I get too carried away, um, what we're going to see is a short clip from one of our latest uh, projects. And we edited in some behind-the-scene material, which kind of illustrates some of the things I just talked about. So um, watch it. You can notice how the character uh, creation process uh, goes along and the animation progresses. And I hope you enjoy. And uh, thank you. Thank you.